We are here within 32,000 acres of the spectacular Kootenai Mountains of British Columbia. This is a place of breathtaking landscapes. This is a place of snow-covered treetops and deep powder. And this is a place where a single mountainside has been transformed into the most exciting and innovative course in snowboard competition history. This course has never been ridden. But today, 18 fearless athletes will take it on to determine who is the best all-around snowboarder on the planet. This is Supernatural, and you're watching the Red Bull Signature Series. The riders are ready, and I'm ready. Ready to witness snowboarding history at this one-of-a-kind competition. Hey, everybody, I'm Sal Masakela, and welcome to the Red Bull Signature Series, bringing you some of the most progressive and innovative sporting events from across our planet, all featured on NBC and the NBC Sports Network. But today, we are here for a two-hour television event unlike anything you have ever seen before. Supernatural, masterminded by one of the most respected and talented riders in the history of snowboarding, Travis Rice. So let's get into it and explain exactly how the contest will work. I think it's gonna be a massive difference, the Rebel Supernatural versus, say, snowboarding events that people are used to watching on TV. I mean, I think just the scale of the run itself. I mean, it's about a mile long drops 2,200 foot vertical. X Games course distance wise is about one third, you know, the distance of this course. And just the amount of options and features, you know, it really is gonna bring out everyone's individual styles. There's a number of things that make this contest different from any other contest. The main thing being that you can't practice, you know, because it's fresh powder, you know, and you don't want to get a lot of tracks on the hill that you're going to compete on, as opposed to a contest like maybe X Games or any other snowboard contest. You know, you can get as much practice as you pretty much need, you know, and you know the course inside and out. You know the jumps, you know the half pipe, uh, whatever it may be. You know, with Red Bull Supernatural, you don't know until it's actually your turn. You, know, you can only just kind of give her your best judgment. So now we know a little bit about the course, let's break down the judging. Riders will be judged on four qualities. First, how creative each rider is with their choice of line. With over 80 features to choose from, competitors have multiple options to connect the most creative lines. Now we have control. Judges will be looking for riders to stay in control, stick their landings, and avoid falling. Then we have air and style. Riders will not only be judged on the difficulty of their tricks, but also how much style they apply to them. Fluidity will be key, as judges will be looking for runs that are fluid and smooth from top to bottom. Each of these will be added into an overall impression score, with 100 points being a perfect run. The riders will have two runs each, and the best single score of the day will win. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for this thing to begin. So I'm gonna throw it to the two Todds, Richards and Harris. Take it away. 
Thank you, Sal. So 36,000 acres of powder terrain at Baldface now becomes the playground for 18 of the world's best snowboarders. Now, Todd, when you're dealing with a perfect canvas like this for these guys to get crazy on with tricks and all these different lines, there's always the possibility of an avalanche occurring. We heard from some of the guys to hear what they thought about the conditions. Avalanches are something you always have to be aware of, even though there will be plenty of people up top. You know, if that slope were to go, it would be catastrophic. You know, we have big trees and obstacles to take us out. It's 55 degrees in the top. It's a clearly defined avalanche path that uh, runs for a couple thousand feet. On that snow, you see all these crazy features, and the first thing goes in my mind, like, what if the first guy, as soon as he puts the edge on it, the whole thing slides? It seems like stability has been pretty good around here, so we're hoping it'll stay that way. But the risk is always there. And as much as the avalanche danger kind of weighs on these guys and is in the back of their mind, they do get to drop into this pristine powder field littered with features for these guys to absolutely go mental on. And Scotty Lego is up first. And the man who gets the honor is 24-year-old Scotty Lego. He is a long way from Seabrook, New Hampshire, but the regular foot rider is set to drop in on quite possibly the most beautiful course of backcountry riding here at Supernatural. So the bronze medalists from the Olympic Games in Vancouver in 2010 will make the inaugural run here at Supernatural. Scotty Lego is now on course. I'll tell you, if you ever wanted to be first coming into a competition, it's definitely here at Supernatural. Dropping in Lego, popping a little method air off that first little mushroom, picking and finding his lines. Very important that you line things up. Lego 540 right there. A little bit of a trouble with the landing. So up top, these guys are looking for the hunt and peck. Find the features. You can see them in the background there. There's just so many things to choose from. It's all individual line choice. Lego coming down here, flowing some turns back and forth. Now these riders are being judged on their tricks, as well as creativity of line, how smooth they are, the flow, how well they're making turns, if they don't look like they're fighting the slope. And Lego just making some deep powder turns right now. Coming over here to a little feature, looking for something to do out into the flats, about to get it going here with this big kicker section down here at the bottom. Scotty Lego approaching the triple section of kickers at the bottom with 120 days to build this course, Todd. It is going to take him less than two minutes to get to the bottom. It is. Big backside 720 for Lego, hitting the only portion of this course that is kind of familiar to some of these park riders. There's some big jumps that have been perfectly manicured, but you're coming out of a powder field. Lego coming into the light post feature here at the bottom, popping off up and over that little snow mushroom and making it across the little flat section. So Lego having a good run with the exception of that 540 up top there off one of the little diving board features, but redeeming himself down at the bottom with that big backside 720 into that perfect powder field and then off the lamppost. You see it right there in slow motion, just taking it out there into the flats. Let's check in with Keir Dillon. All right, Scotty, first Ooh. man to drop and tackle the course. First, how was that first run? Oh, uh, you know, uh, I guess it's what I expected, you know. Uh, I was pretty gripped up there, but once you got in there, it was all good to go. Um, I fell up top, not too stoked on, uh, but hopefully I can go back and get it again. Lego not stoked on his run, but it does become the mark to beat. A 57.60 as we move on to our next competitor. This is 31-year-old David Carrier Porcheron, better known as DCP, the 31-year-old from Quebec, Canada, Todd. This guy is just absolutely a world-renowned backcountry rider. He really is. And what a lot of people don't know is DCP kind of started his career off as a pipe guy coming out of eastern Canada, and then he kind of transitioned into filming, hitting park jumps, and now he's one of the most respected, world-renowned, big backcountry riders there is, and DCP is at home on any steep slope. Hailing from Canada, he has a lot of time in the backcountry, riding snowmobiles around, finding perfect lines. So DCP has got a very nice-looking powder turn to start things off, little method right there off that platform. Really a good view of what these riders have to pick and choose from. Although, when you're in this course, these guys get no practice. It's basically just what you see in front of you. You can kind of look at it from above and say, oh, I want to go over there, I want to go over there. But as soon as you drop in, your mind tends to go blank. So DCP making the most of some of this deep pow, just really throwing some turns down. 
And as Scotty Lego said, it is a lot steeper than you think. It comes at you very fast. And DCP right now dealing with a 55 degree pitch on this section of the course. Oh, nice front side 360. DCP making a lot more use of that middle section of the course than we saw Lego do. Coming in now to the big booter section. DCP basically straight lining this thing. David's looking for a big trick off of this one, trying to get that landing, because you really, you don't know how fast to go. It's not like a snowboard park where you can practice. 720 for DCP right there. So coming down to the final few features in there, he'll show a little style, and that's what snowboarding's all about. You don't want to pass up all that good powder to get to your next feature. Yeah, I just wonder how much these guys are actually in the moment out there. You know, they're just looking for the finish line. Oh, and coming up a little bit short right there on that little bonk transfer. So that'll do it for DCP's run. Let's head back up top here. Check out some of the great action. DCP big backside 360 coming in hot here. I like this combo, this front side 360 into that little pocket, makes that turn, that little backside air over that rock. Now, this front side 360 bonk transfer, it looks like DCP got worked right here. Look at that compression, just explodes off that lip. And yeah, man, that looked like it really hurt him. It looks like he's in a bit of pain. His score does come down. That was a 69.2, so that will put him into first place for the time being as we head back to the top of this course, which is over a mile long. That takes us to John Jackson, really a legend, writer of the year in Transworld Snowboarding for 2010. Todd, this guy is very powerful and just so naturally creative. This course should really favor him. Well, John Jackson and the rest of these riders, they've only had a chance to look at this through pictures and maybe from the sidelines, and things definitely are different once they drop in. Here comes John Jackson for his first run through, threading the needle right there with a little method between those two pine trees. Now, the speeds these guys are taking through here are very deceiving. It may look like they're going kind of slow here at home, but they are just hauling. John Jackson, big air over that double stack, throwing the brakes on here. He is just whipping through this middle section, trying to find another little item to get airborne on, maybe get creative with. And John starts to flow, and. Mr. Jackson here, he's definitely one of the riders that is looking, you know, look to, to be a favorite. He could come out here and absolutely kill it. His video parts are out of hand every year. People look forward to those. Nice backside 360 into that same pocket that DCP took, going a little bit deeper now out into the flats. Oh, wait, where's he going? A little different line in here into the uh, kicker section. John getting some speed up, winding up for something here, taking the big jump, boom, oh! Oh, big backside 720. Bringing that one around, throwing the brakes on again. One more section to conquer here. John's run looking good so far. He wants to kind of end this thing off with an exclamation point. These judges want to have something left in their minds at the end of his run. Front side 360 Ooh. bonk. Landing in the same hot tub that DCP made just one run before. But it was really impressive up top. John Jackson taking that huge air over that double stack and then Hitting the booter down here at the bottom, nice and smooth, and then just coming up short here. We're gonna throw it down to Keir Dillon, who's with John Jackson. Any uh, big surprises on the way down? Uh, I'd say it's steeper than you think. It's really quick. You gotta be on your toes, back and forth, and man, those are some launch pads up there. You really send it. So after three competitors here at Red Bull Supernatural, it's David Carrier Porcheron leading the way with a 69.20, Scotty Lego in second, and John Jackson in third. Still to come, the legend of Norway, Terry Hawkinson, takes his first run when we return to Canada after this. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series, and I'm gonna guess that you are thoroughly enjoying watching some of the biggest names in snowboarding make history at one of the most anticipated snowboard contests ever. That said, to be a fan of Travis Rice is to understand that only he could conceive an event like this. But how? Well, you have to go inside the mind of Travis Rice to find out how his five years of vision became this reality. The idea for this event, I mean, really it started probably almost five years ago. The snowboarding was kind of really broken up into two sectors. You know, you had the contest side and you had this adventure film side. You know, incredible people in both sides and there was some crossover, but you know, there wasn't anything that highlighted the best of both worlds. The idea with the Supernatural was to kind of switch the paradigm, work in the summer and 
create these features that we dream of. Here in the Kootenays, they just have amazingly consistent snowfall and ended up finding the perfect run at Bald Face. Here we are, man. Naturally, you know, beautiful day. Bald Face Casking Lodge has an incredible history, you know, rooted in snowboarding. The owner, Jeff Pensiero, you know, is all for it. We immediately went to our land managers and got going on the process to get all the permits we needed. Through all these drawings, I was able to convey visually about how we were going to try to do this. It was a really good opportunity for us to actually work with a really great forester and a really great biologist in the area. And in the process, we learned a lot. This here is Lee. He is our uh, contractor out here. He walked the whole face and ended up yeah, marking this whole course. Lee and Jeff were able to basically hire an amazing crew of guys. So many tricky little nuances to setting the stuff up that you know, that's why I think I ended up doing probably eight trips during the building of the course up here. Nothing like this has really been done before. And us basically running this first year's event, you know, we're going in blind. You know, we build these features in the summer, and then the first two months of winter, you get kind of freakish snow conditions, wind, everything's drifting. A good amount of the features that we're working on, you know, are kind of unrideable unless we go in and shovel things smooth and make them much more user-friendly. About 10 days before the event, we'll just leave it alone and just let it get a nice frosting on it, and, uh, and then it'll be game on. So that's it. That's what we came here for. We got the kicker below in the jib section. It's going to be, it's going to be pretty all the time. They basically made a snowboard park in a powder field. Holy Super Mario, this thing. It's been amazing to see this thing come together from you know, start to finish. Right here, right now, this is it. Travis has been telling his friends about his vision for a while, but man, once you get a look at this and hear what went into it, it's unbelievable. And you think the construction began back in July of 2011 on this beautiful 36,000 acres of powder and terrain really is the ultimate playground. As we get back to the competition, Lucas Dabari, Terry A. Hawkinson, and Mark Solers have all had their chance to take their first run of two. And for Lucas Dabari, it is all about speed and commitment. <laughs> Lucas Dabari absolutely hauling. Had a little bit of a problem with the landing right there, almost clipping a rock. And then down here at the bottom, a nice switch backside 540 would end his run out. And then it was the legend, Terry Hawkinson, one of the most, if not the most, respected riders in the history of the sport. He took to this thing in typical Terry fashion, making even the basic turns look good. Look at that perfect method style from Terry right there. That is why he is the king. And then Mark Solars took to the course. Backside 360 up top, you can see how much speed, how much distance these guys are carrying. A nice frontside 360, but a little bit of a butt check kept Mark Sullers from a completely clean run and then just threw down a nice backside 720 to cap off his run through the course. So that's where we stand right now. DCP still with the mark to beat. Terry Hawkinson sits in third place with a 58.98. And we are back to the top of this beautiful course here in the interior of British Columbia. And one of the most creative snowboarders on that planet, no question about it, is 29-year-old Nico Mueller. Nicholas Mueller coming out of Switzerland. He is one of the riders' favorites. He's one of my favorite people to watch in snowboarding, and it's just because his unique look at the terrain. He's able to read terrain like none other. Nico getting ready to drop here. And this is his kind of terrain, starting things off. A little butter off the corners up top. Just look at him. He's already going to town here, and he hasn't even dropped into the first air section of the course. Nico is like a ferret. Look at him right there. Cross court method air as he throws the brakes on, pops off this diving board. Nice little half cab right there. If you were to ask me who could possibly win this thing other than Travis Rice, my first choice would be Nicholas Mueller, just because he knows what it takes to actually make any type of terrain look good. Look at him, he's all over this thing. He's forward, he's backwards. Nico just trying to find these lines. Cruising down here, this is where the flow comes in, linking things up, making things look good. Coming into this little hip section. 
jumps off that little stale fish right there. And some of these little features that aren't, you know, they haven't been made are some of the, the best ones for these guys where they can really show what's going on. Nico coming in fakey, coming in backwards to this big Buddha right here. What's he got setting up off of his toes? Switch backside 360 right there. Nicely done, Nicholas Mueller. Half cabinet around, back to Fords again, coming into the light post zone. This is where the little bonks are. I gave a couple people some problems. Nico, a little backside air off that hip. And what's he gonna do? Just a little ollie right there, making it into the transition. So Nicholas Mueller, oh, he's not done yet. <laughs> not done yet at all. Backside air, finish things off. So Nicholas was on the hunt early with that little butter around 360. I like this combo right here, the backside 180 into powder into the switch backside 360. Nice run from Nicholas Mueller. Let's now send it down to Keir Dillon. How much of your run is planned and then how much is truly making it up as you go down? I'd say about 40 planned and the rest is just made up. You filmed many amazing video parts, compete in tons of contests. What was the feeling of going down that run for you? It, I was a little nervous up there. But once you drop in, you forget about everything. Nicholas with a full pole, Todd. He goes to the top of the leaderboard with an 80 even, which takes us to Mark McMorris. Remember, 18 of the world's best competing here in 36,000 acres of powder at Baldface. And McMorris really known more as a park guy. Groom jumps is his thing. How will he excel here in the powder? Well, you talk about a stark difference between Nicholas Mueller and Mark McMorris. McMorris coming off a double gold at the X Games. Now here he is playing with the big boys in a free riding competition. Now, if you're used to doing one thing and suddenly you're thrown into a different element, well, it can definitely throw you off your game, but it's all about adaptation as McMorris a little bit of a, you know, as a creative line choice up top with that slash off that first feature, but just ended up getting stuck behind that tree. So we're gonna see if McMorris's park skills will translate over to Deep Pow. And you would think watching him at the X Games at Slope Style and Big Air, this would be something yeah. he would excel in, but the conditions are so much different. The steepness, 55 degrees, and then the powder. It's so different. It's, you know, I think McMorris will be the most comfortable when he's in the air. Just landing, you know, the simplest tricks in powder like this, it's not easy, especially when it's this steep. You've got to manage the snow that's coming down with you. You've got to manage the speed that it takes to hit these obstacles, how far you're going to go. But, you know, it's just going to come with time. McMorris in five years could be the gnarliest free rider ever. But right now, he's just playing with the big boys, and he's the small fish in the big pond. You've got to remember, this course has 100-plus features on it. He's used to really dialing into one or two, and here he is just getting ragdolled as he goes for the big flip. McMorris getting tomahawked right there. He's going to be cleaning snow out of his jacket for the next half an hour. You know, it's... Like I said, McMorris looking good in the air, but when once you put it down in snow, it's finessing with powder. You need to put that board down very, very lightly. Now here's where he should do well. Exactly, here he comes into this perfectly groomed kicker. Watch how good he looks in the air. Boom, backside 720, perfect. But as soon as he goes for the landing, that nose gets buried. And I'm just telling you, Todd, it's all gonna come with time to this kid. 2,200 vertical feet is what Mark McMorris is dealing with right now, and his legs are probably absolutely burning after taking a few big falls, but he's back up and riding. you got to like his attitude. He's still trying to discover this course. Remember, he'll get one more crack at it after this first run. Not to mention, it's really, really fun to ride a course like this with fresh powder. I'm sure right now he's going, oh, I wish I could get back up there. And here we go. There's that little slash where it threw him into the trees. It's a bird's eye view of it right there. Ugh, too bad for McMorris, but you know, time may tell. He may be the next big thing in free riding. There's that backflip to Tomahawk. Ugh, chilly reception for McMorris and that beautiful 720. Unfortunately, he couldn't get it back under his feet. And let's send it down to the finish area with Keir Dillon. Just coming off a double goal at X Games in a situation that you're completely comfortable with. How difficult is it to expose yourself to a completely different style of riding here? It was cool. Like, I don't know. I was super excited to come here. And uh, I'm learning lots, as you can see. I learned to land with my nose up. And I took some insane tumbles. And I'm going to try and do better next round. 
So Mark McMorris with the right attitude here at Red Bull Supernatural. His score, though, puts him in eighth place. Eight down, 10 more to go here on the first run from the Supernatural event at Baldface in British Columbia. When we come back, two of Europe's finest imports take to the course after this. From the heart of the Kootenai Mountains in the interior of British Columbia, this is Red Bull Supernatural. And this is 28-year-old Aero Nimala. This guy is out of Finland, Todd. So smooth, so clean, he should excel on this one-mile-long course. Now, Aero's had a lot of great video parts over the years. He's used to riding in the Canadian backcountry, so this is nothing new to him. He's one of these odds-on favorites out here, taking the big tricks to the backcountry. He's no stranger to lines and huge booters. So Arrow should be right at home. Powder not a factor for him. This is an area that gets 42 feet of average annual snowfall. He is set to drop in on his first run of two. Here we go, Arrow taking to the course. Coming off this first little hip here, a little shifty right there. Getting things going, getting his line warmed up. Spotting your line is very, very important out here. Look at that. Big thread the needle right there. Arrow carrying a lot of speed. Now, Todd, it's really hard to throw the brakes on and actually see where you're going with all that powder flying around. And here he comes off this diving board. Nice method air. We saw Lucas Dabari almost take his face off on that rock a little bit earlier, but Arrow is making short work of it. Here he comes, looking for another feature to get a handle on right here. Arrow looking for that flow. Well, the powder looks good, Todd, and we remind our viewers this is the first time these guys have had to take a run in this course, so he's really on a seek-and-destroy mission. It really is, you know, and, and these guys, they come through here. What it may look like from the top completely changes once they get into this course, but Arrow right now on track to hit the big booter. Mm. Right there, a little front side 900 action for Arrow, bringing the technical to the back entry, capping it around. Oh, oh he goes down on that 180. I guess that little roller was bigger than he expected, so... Things were looking good for Arrow until that little crater that he just made, trying to line himself up here for this bottom feature. You are your own pioneer on this course, Todd. You don't have friends to tell you what to hit, where the landing is, and what's it like. And Arrow goes out there and gets tangled in the trees a little bit, but he comes to the end and he's still given. Arrow, very impressive with that nice big 900 off that huge booter at the bottom and also that big thread the needle up top, just carrying so much speed. Here's that 900 again. Brings that around clean, but unfortunately, just got hung up on the tree right there at the bottom. Almost took his face off on that as well, but clean run from top to bottom. <laughs> that thing was insane. Wow. Arrow gets a 68.90. Impressive despite coming in contact with the tree. Back to the top. Gigi Ruff, the 30-year-old out of Austria, Todd. There is not anything on this planet that this guy won't jump, hit, or fly off of. He has one of my favorite styles in snowboarding. Him and Nicholas Mueller, for me, are the two odds-on favorites to do well here, as well as, you know, Travis Rice, obviously. But Gigi Ruff has this uncanny ability to be able to read terrain and land. You know, he does very, very technical tricks off of these natural features, which is a very difficult thing to do. A lot of these other kids these days are used to these perfectly groomed park rails and things there. Gigi, little mushroom line up top, making short work at the top mm. half of this course. Massive front side 360 right there. Wow, that was huge. And this has got to be a, like a kid in a candy store at Willy Wonka's. There's so many features to choose from, but you got to make it stick. You get two runs. We're only keeping your best score. That is a great analogy. It is like being in a candy store for these guys, especially for a guy like Gigi coming out of the Austrian Alps. He's used to free riding, making short work of terrain in his home. Right there, backside 360 into that little saddle area. As he comes out here into the flats to line up for this kicker, Gigi's had some of the best video parts ever put on film. We're gonna see him chuck off this big kicker right here. Front side 720, very slowly rotated. Just a little bit of a drag, but you know, that top half of his line was out of control. Look at this. Gigi just flowing here through the course. Remember again, the judges wanna see creativity as well as smoothness all the way through the course, not just when you're in the air, but make it look good from top to bottom. Mm. Gigi coming up about seven sandwiches short of a picnic right there on that crack track. You need a little more speed, Gigi. 
Gigi had the fluidity. Let's go back to the top and look at this again. Clean from top to bottom. Well, that bonk right there, I didn't notice it at first, but he actually 360s off that, taps his nose in that mushroom. Just makes it all the more difficult. That method air right there, nice and clean. Gigi flowing like water from the top to the bottom of this course. Let's go down to Keir Dillon. Thoughts? You've been thinking about that run for a long time now. Any surprises while you're going down? Oh, actually, I did not think about it all too long. The first drop and I wanted to tackle a pillow on the right and kind of redirect to the left where I bothered. Bonked it and uh, it, was, it was just sheer too big. Like, once I rolled up on take, I was like, oh no, to get to the second pillow, I'm gonna have to just let it go now. And uh, luckily I could keep my tip up and we were off to the left, so dumped some speed. But then it was all good from there. The front side three, back side three. I think to remember. <laughs> it's quite exciting. 30 year old Gigi Ruff of Austria throws down an incredible performance in his first run. As we take a look at the standings so far, it is Gigi Ruff who dominated his first run. He is now sitting in first place, bumping Nico Mueller to second, DCP to third. Before we get back to more competition, let's check in with Sal Masakela, who's got more on the Red Bull Signature Series. Thanks, guys. From here, I can tell you that these custom features behind me, truly incredible. You can literally feel how steep it is just standing here. Look, 55 degree pitch, that thing is gone. Then, the riders have to think about negotiating the 80 plus man-made features, and then continue down this 2200 vertical foot course, hitting kickers, the park features at the bottom, truly spectacular. But remember, Supernatural, it's just one of the events in the Red Bull Signature Series, a television series unlike anything ever attempted before. Conceived by the athletes themselves, the Red Bull Signature Series places the planet's most fearless athletes center stage. Over 20 of the most progressive and innovative competitions in countries all over the globe, unleashed in one epic series. pushes to new extremes as freeriders chart the uncompromising terrain of Red Bull Rampage. Enduro bike riders confront the hardcore terrain of Transylvania in Red Bull Romania. A half million fans swarm to see high performance surfing from the world's best at the US Open of Surfing. And the collective energy of thousands surges in the mother of all freestyle motocross events, Red Bull x Files. Prepare to believe in the unbelievable, as these athletes attempt to make the impossible possible. The Red Bull Signature Series is the evolution of sports. Watch all year long on NBC and the NBC Sports Network. Go to RedBullSignatureSeries.com for complete schedule details. are looking at the Kootenai Mountains in the interior, British Columbia, Canada. This is Red Bull Supernatural. 18 of the world's most progressive riders dropped into one of the most incredible courses anywhere. The judges, they're looking for line, air style, control, and Todd, most importantly, fluidity. That's right, from top to bottom, these guys have to make the best use of the terrain. Whatever shows up in front of them, they have to utilize that and hit it to the best of their ability. 100 is the best score. Gigi Ruff leads the way right now with an 84. While we're away, Mark Carter got a chance to take his first run of two. He laid down a 53.60. Now remember, these riders are not able to practice on this course at all. So what they see is what they get as soon as they drop in. Mark Carter took to this course the best of his ability half cabin around there throwing some good airs and then it was all about Mark Landvik. Now Landvik has been plagued with some injuries for the past year or so and this is his first step back into any kind of competition on this snowboard. Landvik would throw down a nice run there, big backside 540 to get work done and we head back up to the top. 
And there he is, Travis Rice, the 29-year-old out of Jackson Hole, Wyoming. He is the creator, the mastermind behind Red Bull Supernatural. Todd, is there any other backcountry rider that is better than Travis Rice? At this point, in my opinion, I don't think there's a snowboarder that's any better than Travis Rice. You talk about somebody that can go out there and get it done. He's been putting video parts together that have been blowing minds for years in his movies. The cinematography in his movies, unparalleled. So here we go, Travis Rice on his first run of two at Supernatural. Travis Rice, arguably the best terrain snowboarder on the planet right now. This is the course that he designed, but you know what? He has to ride it just like everyone else does. Big frontside 360 off that little pinnacle right there, straight into a method air off that hip. Travis is carrying some serious speed down this course. Travis Rice on his first run of two with a lot of heat, and he gets inverted and lands it. And Todd, that has been the most interesting thing so far through that very tricky top section, Travis Rice handling the heat. Wow, Travis threw a huge <laughs> laid out backflip up there, and he's riding this course to the best of his ability here. Little switch backside 180 there, trying to slow things down, get a handle on where he is, get ready to line up something else. Switch backside five right there into a little pocket. So far, Travis has thrown down the most moves. Here he comes now into the flats, turns it around into reverse. He's gonna come into this jump switch. What's he got? Cab 900 for Travis, putting that thing down like butter. Rice looking the best on this course by far for sure. There's some flow coming in through here. Rice is making it look easy like a true professional should. Here he comes into the light post section. What's he got off of that? Oh, oh. took it huge to the parking lot on that one. Wow. Here we go, Rice taking it from the top here. Watch this little gap out up and over that little mushroom section there. Ooh, narrowly avoiding the tree, throwing the brakes on there as we see from Travis's POV. Then up and off, little front side 360 off that little bump right there. Quickly into a method air. You can really get an idea of how fast these obstacles are coming at you. And then it was that massive laid out backflip right there. Wow, and it didn't end. Then a 900 at the bottom. Whew, Travis Rice. All right, Travis, you've been blowing our minds for years. Now with this event, finally after so much waiting, you're able to take your first run. What's it feel like? Oh, I don't know, man. I'm just glad to be down. Such a fun run. Like, yeah, we built the best run in the world. and Getting the chance, especially to watch everyone else come down and just conquer this thing. Everyone's stepping up to the plate. Stoked on my run. Indeed. Ah, oh, top pillow I hit. It was so money. What a performance by Travis Rice. Remember, it's two runs. We only keep your best score. And Todd, that is going to be a tough one to match as Travis Rice throws down a sick run. His score coming in now a 91. So he goes to the top of the leaderboard. Well, that no doubt is in part to the fact that he went absolutely huge. You get technical down the bottom and just made the difficult look very easy. Typical Travis Rice style. 18 of the world's best. And right now, Travis Rice leads the way. Can anyone top him? We'll find out when we return to Red Bull Supernatural. Welcome back to the interior of British Columbia, Canada for Red Bull Supernatural. 18 of the world's most progressive snowboarders have come to conquer this amazing course. Sage Kotzenberg, the 19-year-old out of Park City, laid down a 46.40 on run number one. Sage having a couple problems, but once he got in the air, things looked a little bit better for him. Eric Jackson was next to drop in, the younger brother of John. Eric Jackson as well is a great free rider. He ended up with a 64.00. A couple big transfers for him, but just a little bobble here and there kind of kept him out of the running for the podium. 36-year-old Devin Walsh out of British Columbia got his crack at his first run of two. One of the legends of the sport with one of the cleanest styles ever. Devin would have a couple problems on his landings up top and then down at the bottom off the big booter. So Devin would end up with a 47.204 score. And finally, from the land of the rising sun, Kazuhiro Kokubo. The two-time US Open halfpipe champion took his run at the course. He had a couple problems with his landings, but Kazu, once he got in the air, looked very, very strong. Nice front side 1080 and a huge ollie shifty out into the flats, ended off Kazu's run. 
Well, there are the scores. Travis Rice leads the way with a 91. Gigi Ruff sits in second, and Nico Mueller in third. Here is our final competitor in run number one, and it's pretty good in 25-year-old Jake Lavelle. Jake Bavel, who would have thought he would have grown into one of the best big mountain freestylers that the world has ever seen? Constantly putting out amazing video parts. Let's see if those skills can translate to here. Well, he's smooth, he's creative. The guy has effortless looking style. Right now, though, he's trying to top the 91 thrown down by Travis Rice. Jake with a little Butter 360 off the first mushroom feature. And if at home you're noticing it starting to get a little bit more shady on the course, it's a northeast facing aspect. That means the snow is going to stay better here longer. It's, we're not dealing with the sun heating it up and going through cycles. That makes it better for the riders. But the trade off is, well, definition. These guys won't be able to see their landings or these features as well as they would if it was a totally sunny slope. Jake Blavel, the final competitor of 18, getting his first run of two, and Todd, he is absolutely flying through this upper section. I believe the term is mobbing. He's definitely cruising down this thing very, very fast, starting to look for features. We noticed, like, Travis Rice's run or Gigi Ruff's run, they had already packed in three or four different airs already. Jake just seems like he's kind of lost up there on the slope, and it's it's easy for that to happen. I mean, there's just so much terrain, it can become almost overwhelming. But here we go, Jake Blavelt coming into the kicker section. There's that groomed portion, the only groomed portion on the entire course, just to set up this jump into the perfect pow landing. Front side 540 stalefish. Blavelt slowing things down now, lining up for the light post, trying to get that tap, trying to ollie out off of the cat track and smack his board on the little fingers of the light post. Here we go, Jake, little method air right there onto that hip. Straight across, gonna try to get a tap on there. Boom, clips off of that one, just makes the landing. So top to bottom for Jake Blavelt. He didn't have any falls, but he also didn't pack a ton of features in up top. There's that 360 butter off that mushroom. And then Jake was just basically on a hunt until down here, that nice front side 540 stale fish off the jump and that tap, kapow, right there. Todd, this was an amazing round number one. The riders really went for it, but there was one moment that earned today's Casio G's One Commando Stomp Line. And this goes to Gigi Ruff from Austria. Solid descent from the top of the course, hitting two technical pillow lines. Front side 360, nose tap off the last pillow. This earned Gigi the Casio G's one commando stomp line of the day. So 18 of the world's best have traveled to Canada, and after one run, Travis Rice leads the way with a 91. When we come back, run number two. They've got a taste of what the course is like. We'll see how they attack it when we return to Canada. You're watching Red Bull Supernatural. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. This, my friends, is what the riders live for. Deep, fresh powder, or the pow-pow as we shredders like to call it. Trillions of individual snowflakes, each one unique and geometrically beautiful in its design. However, when the conditions are just right and they all decide to move together as one, they can become one of the most destructive forces imaginable and are definitely something to be treated with the utmost respect. risk is, is very real everywhere in the backcountry, especially here in British Columbia. And uh, a lot of people lose their lives or get, get really damaged uh, traveling around. So we do everything we can to mitigate the risk. Avalanche control has been a huge issue 
for this event the whole way through. You know, I think we're lucky to have some of really the best in the world, guides, avalanche forecasters at our disposal that are passionate about this project too. We need to do more avalanche control than what we would normally do at Baldface. So we brought in this special device called a daisy bell for avalanche control. That's a, a hydrogen oxygen exploder that delivers about an eight kilo charge. And we fly it under the helicopter. It's a new device that allows us to pinpoint and repeatedly blast uh, the sweet spots on the slope and on adjacent slopes so we could get an idea of what was going on with the snowpack. It's a pretty cool little new piece of technology. I think there's three in North America right now. And even with all that, uh, there's always this little bit of an unknown factor out there, and that's what we're really trying to nail down, is what is the unknown factor and what can we do to try to mitigate the risk. Well, the course itself is a masterpiece, but every possible precaution is being taken to protect these 18 world-class snowboarders as they make their way back to the top for their second run here at Red Bull Supernatural. These guys jump in the cat, they whip back up to the top, and the big news, now they know what the course looks like. Maybe they can charge some of these features a little faster, they know where things are. It's definitely gonna be an interesting run number two. One thing we do know, Travis Rice has thrown down the best score to beat, a 91. That becomes the high water mark. And the man who took the first run of the day has already completed his second run. Scotty Lego improves just a little bit, Todd, with a 59.40. Lego with one of the best styles in the business, whether it be in half pipe, slope style, or riding off backcountry kickers, would better his first run score by two points, netting him a 59.40. So Lucas Debari is set to take his second run here. Now he's got a feel for the course, but with just one run, how much of an improvement can the young man make? Well, Lucas on his first run went absolutely massive. Look how big that is right there. So I look for him to come into this thing fast. He knows where to go now, but he almost clipped his face on that rock. So look for him to make some slight improvements on the places where he had trouble and really up the ante. Six, five, four, eight. Here we go, 24-year-old Lucas Debari out of Glacier, Washington. Lucas off that very popular diving board feature straight away. Coming in hot to something, he's trying to navigate over to it. Whoa, he's carrying a lot of speed, Debari. <laughs> Holy cow, that didn't even look real. Debari with a big front side air off of that, just grenading into the snow. Thankfully, these guys have, you know, five or six feet of fresh powder to land in. It makes these landings a lot easier. So Dabari already with a massive air off that upper section. He's looking for something else to sink his teeth into. Sitting on a 68.40, that was his first run score, and he is in full seek and destroy. But Todd, he is carrying so much heat. He is. Dabari is going absolutely mental, carrying oh! so much speed that he almost slides out there where the powder turns into the groomed slope. Here he comes. Coming in switch, switch backside, 540. Lands that, so Debar with that huge front center up top, that switch backside, 540. He's looking for something down the bottom here to really end his runoff strong, flowing like water here through the course. What's it gonna be? Looking for a fresh landing, going for that bonk. Tapping the pole out into the flats there, Lucas Debari. Wow, look how massive that is. Going for the transfer, trying to land on the transition over there. And then that nice switch backside 540 on the end jump. So Dabari taking some big risk up top and then making it smooth all the way through the bottom half of the course. Let's now send it down to Keir Dillon. What'd you discover on your way down there? I've been looking at this one pretty uh, large size gap for the whole week. And uh, I just decided that, you know what, if I would do this contest, I want to win it. And the only way to win it is to do something insane to beat Travis. So. I tried to straight air the gap this time and actually overshot it by like 10 feet. You know, so far I've had fun and we'll just see what the judges have to say. Well, the judges say they liked it to the tune of a 77 for Lucas Dabari on his second run. So that's the score he will keep, but it is still Travis Rice leading the way with a 91. More second and final runs when we return to Red Bull Supernatural in Canada.
Welcome back to British Columbia and Bald Face Lodge. This is Red Bull Supernatural. Well, we are down to the final runs of the day at Red Bull Supernatural. Todd, you've been around this sport for 25 plus years. How about the evolution? Well, there's no doubt that the competitive snowboarding world has definitely evolved and I've been there for a lot of it. Let's take a look back at some competitive snowboard history and how it got to here. Like most sports, snowboarding was born out of the desire to play, to experience an activity for the simple and pure enjoyment of it. But with all sports, a competitive side inevitably emerges. In 1981, that's exactly what happened. These first events were literally bootstrapped affairs that drew a handful of the curious and the committed. Snowboarding was considered risky and dangerous, so only a few ski resorts allowed it. This limited these early events to only a couple of locations that would willingly host. More motivated by trick progression than trophies, participants saw competitions as a chance to push the limits of what could be done on a snowboard. This would become a defining theme for the sport. Initially, boards were crudely designed and offered limited capabilities on the slopes. But pioneers like Tom Sims and Jake Burton's advancements in board design and technology opened the doors to a whole new world of riding. Early adopters instinctually looked to alpine skiing for inspiration with downhill slalom events. And a few even tried their skills at moguls, only to learn that not everything crossed over from skiing to snowboarding. But on the west coast, freestyle side of the sport was brewing, and snowboarding was more an extension of surfing and skateboarding. Courses mimicked the features you would find in a skateboard park, not on a ski slope, with half pipes and jumps or kickers becoming a favorite amongst West Coasters. As the 80s pushed on, snowboarding attracted corporate sponsors and contests spawned the first generation of the big name pros. As the competition scene took off, another brand of riders was looking to make their tracks not on the podium, but in the powder. With a thirst for untracked lines and first descents, these big mountain riders, as they came to be known, teamed up with filmmakers. Snowboard filmmaking was born. Big mountain riding experts like Tom Burton and others were blowing minds and beating odds they descended the most treacherous slopes on the planet. Back on the competition front, half pipes were ubiquitous and freestyle riding expanded in slope style hybrid format that fused skateboard park-inspired jumps, transitions, and features with downhill. The 90s proved that there was no looking back, and snowboarding defied all who declared it as a passing fad. Snowboarding officially hit the big time. Professionals were making real money in sponsorships and contest winnings. From paychecks to pipes, everything got bigger. Half pipes became super pipes. A few hundred spectators became thousands and pro snowboarders were bona fide rock stars. The sport was no longer a winter sideshow. By the time ESPN's X Games expanded into winter, it was confirmed that snowboarding would be added to the Olympic Games in 1998. It was the ultimate validation for snowboarding as a legitimate sport. There was no turning back. As the 2000s pushed on, so did competitive snowboarding. But that original spirit of pure fun, pushing the limits, and exploring the infinite possibilities of what can be done on a snowboard, and that carries on to this day. The long and winding road in Todd, the fashions have changed, but the progression continues. I don't know if the fashions have changed at all. Did you see that guy in the jeans in the mogul field? There's people right now wondering what that guy's jean size is. Speaking of legends, Terry A. Hawkinson took his second run. He threw down a 68.20. Terry Hawkinson with one of the best styles in snowboarding. You talk about a guy who knows how to make a powder turn look amazing. It's definitely this guy right here. The 38-year-old from Norway's day is done here in Canada, but just having him on the mountain says something about this competition, Red Bull Supernatural. He will always go down as a legend of the sport. And then it was Mark Solers coming in here, trying his hand at the course, looking for his second run. Nice backside 360 up top and a laid out backflip. Solar's big improvement of 51 in his first run. His second run nets him a 68.30. And finally, Mark McMorris looking for redemption. Remember, he threw down a 37 in his first run. His second run score, Todd, at 63. Mark McMorris looking to up the ante. His first run, well, it looked like he was just getting used to landing in powder. His second run, a definite improvement. McMorris would throw down a nice backside 720. Very, very comfortable in the air. 
And check this out right here, log jam, backside 360, McMorris coming back with a bang. And everyone's still chasing Travis Rice. His score, a 91 holding up. Remember, it's a two-run format. We only keep your best score. When you can't get on the course, there's still plenty of powder in the interior of British Columbia. You're watching Red Bull Supernatural. Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series, where 18 of the world's best riders are competing in the most anticipated contest in the sport's history. Now, with eight days to wait patiently for perfect event conditions, that means the riders had some time on their hands. Time to experience the type of epic powder days that only you and I could dream of. I got an email from Travis this one day. So yeah, cheers, everybody, and um, we're just uh, Gonna go to Ballface Lodge and uh, we'll have this event, but most of all, we'll just ride and, and we'll just reconnect, ride powder, and, and remember uh, why we do this. There's a lot of terrain around here to even hike or go catboarding. And uh, yeah, it doesn't leave any boring moment up here. You get to just exchange with other riders and, and see how their season is going. and what their ventures are. So yeah, it's, it's nice, just relaxed up here. The time we've spent here so far uh, has been awesome. You know, just free riding around and, and with such a great group of riders and everyone's having such a good time. I mean, how could you not? We have perfect powder in sunny days. We have a showdown, folks. We have a showdown indeed. <laughs> The epitome of living the rock star life, Todd Richards. Yeah, definitely. These guys are so lucky they get to come up here and ride powder. And while we're away, Aero Nimala dropped in for his second run through the course. Now remember, his first run score was a 68.90. He's looking to improve it, and he can't. He comes up with a 66.80. So Todd, in this format, he'll keep that first run. He will. He went for the front side, 1080, kind of sticking up on a little bit of a washout. Arrow would have a couple problems up top, and they would plague him in his score. Second run issues, also the theme of the day for Gigi Ruff. Remember, his first run score was amazing. He had an 84, but on run number two, just a 58. Gigi looking for the great lines up top. Now, remember, these guys have already been through the course once. Now they're coming through, trying to make their lines a little bit different. They want to find those fresh powder landings, know the speed, but Gigi would go down on a front side 1080 off the jump, and that definitely hurt his score. So he holds on to run number one, and that takes us back to the competition at the top of the course. 31-year-old Mark Carter, this guy coming to us from 10 Sleep, Wyoming. Fearless, aggressive. You can go on and on about his kid's style. Yep, Carter's first run. He had a couple little problems there, but he's looking to make things up on his second run. You see right there, coming up a little bit short. So Carter now on course. Remember, 53.60 is what he's sitting on. We only keep your best score of two. It's cool to hear the helicopter. You hear all these noises above these riders when they're about to drop in, and then all they hear is the countdown, and then you're just let loose on this face. Carter carrying a lot of speed here. Front side 360, Mark Carter sticking that one. Look how fast he's going, that huge rooster tail of powder. Mm. It is just so steep and deep up there. It looks absolutely a joy to ride this face. Mark Carter absolutely surfing the mountain right now. We remind you, the top score right now, Travis Rice with a 91. And that's by virtue of getting a lot of features packed in up top. Mark Carter kind of looks like he skipped a whole bunch of this course. Maybe looking for a different line. Here he comes into the big booter. It's a setup. He's carving in on his heels. It'd be something front side 720. Oh, 900. Carter setting that thing down. Oh. oh, and then hitting that roller. If you're not on your game in powder, you will get rolled. Coming into the bottom feature here. What do we got? Into the light post. What are we going to see from Carter? Just a little ollie out trying to tap the branch right there. Up top. 
popping off those mushrooms, getting that front side 360 in, and a lot of spray on his powder turns. Carter ripping run. He had a lot of speed, but he slowed down long enough to talk to Keir Dillon. How do you feel about your performance today? Um, you know, I, I'm healthy, so I'm happy. Um, you always want to do a little better, but I mean, to place last in this would be amazing anyways, just because we're all winning up here and the, the lineup of riders is pretty unreal. And I mean, just being here and watching the live snowboarding go down is, I mean, it's the best live snowboarding you'll ever see. So, I mean, it's a win-win situation all around. So Mark Carter gets a 64.70, better than his first run, but not enough to crack the top nine, and the top nine get the automatic berth into next year's competition. Aaron Gigi will hold on to their first run scores as well, but coming up, Travis Rice takes his second and final run at Red Bull Supernatural. Welcome back to the beautiful Kootenai Mountains in British Columbia, Canada. This is Red Bull Supernatural, and Travis Rice continues to lead the way. While we were away, Mark Landvik, the 32-year-old from Alaska, laid down his second run, Todd, and it was much better than his first, getting a 55.50. Lando, as we said at the top of the show, has been plagued by some injuries the past couple of years, but he's looking strong now, ending his run off with a nice big frontside 540, landing fakie in powder. It's not easy, so Lando got a decent score for that run. 29-year-old Jackson Hole, Wyoming native Travis Rice set to drop in on his second run. Todd, he laid down the best first run, a 91, hitting almost every feature. Travis had the most technical run by far. He did a 900, that massive backflip, lots of speed, lots of style, finesse. Travis Rice, all the ingredients for a big score from the judges. The 2002 Trans World Snowboarding Magazine Rookie of the Year to this. Red Bull Supernatural and Travis is on course. <laughs> Not to mention a whole bunch of Riders of the Year sandwiched in there between then and now. Rice starting things off, little log jam off the top there. Look at the airtime that he's getting. He's completely going to a new zone, kind of going underneath that little feature right there. Already packed in four features up top trying to maximize the top half of this course because he knows down there in the middle there's not much you can do. Now Travis zigzagging across, looking for something else. Nice big powder slash right there, really making use of his edges, digging those in and getting some nice powder turns. Oh, front flip right there off that little log pileup feature. That sets him up perfectly for this one. Backside 360 shifty for him. So Rice definitely having the most going on at the top of his course. Method air right there on that hip. Natural hip that wasn't made. Mother Nature planted that one here. Now Travis heading into the big jump features. Throwing it around cab again. Switch backside. 900 for Rice. Looking very, very strong. I think this might be an even higher score than his first run. Coming in here to the light post feature. What's he got? Rice really turning up the heat here on his second run. Big backside 360, trying to bonk the tree in there. Wow. Up and over the conifers for Travis Rice. What a performance. Holy moly, this is going to be a nice way to look at things from the view that Travis gets. He's really got a lot going on at the top of this course. I mean, there are some big errors that he had to throw the brakes on instantly or else he'd fly into the trees. And then that switch backside 900, so floaty and perfect. Travis, inspiring to say the least. Front flip, shifty 360s. <laughs> Looks like you're just having a lot of fun out there. Oh man, I said it before. We look everywhere for, you know, maybe one or two of those features in a, a single run. And it's just a joy to be able to line them up all one after another. And, and it's damn good snow, man. Someone was smiling down on us. Amen. Perfect pow, good crew, bald face. Not bad. Travis leading the way with a 91, sitting in second, Gigi Ruff and Nicholas Mueller rounding out the top three. Gigi.
Welcome back to the Red Bull Signature Series. At this point, with DCP injured and Travis already having the best two runs of the day, the other riders are going to have to have the runs of their lives to knock T. Rice out the top spot. Guys? Thank you, Sal. While we're away, Sage Kotzenberg, the 19-year-old out of Park City, Utah, got his second crack at Supernatural. His first run score, a 46.40, but in his second run, Todd Richards laid down a 62. Sage taking his crack at this course, usually more at home at a snowboard park or, you know, riding around off some big kicker somewhere, but Sage threw down enough tricks to get him on the board, but not close to the top. Next up, 23-year-old Eric Jackson, the younger brother of John Jackson. This guy has such an easy style, and I guess when you hang around with your older brother and it's John Jackson, you're going to get better. That's for sure, and he won the Trans World Snowboarding Video Part of the Year for this year, and it's just because Eric Jackson is very, very smooth. He draws unique lines, and let's see if he can put that to the test here. At Scary Cherry here at Baldface Lodge, Red Bull Supernatural. Here he goes, dropping into his second run. Remember, best score counts. If there was ever a time for these guys to shine, it's right now. His first run score was a 64. Here he goes. Oh, little butter wow. backside 720 right there off that platform. Very, very nice. Eric working this course, looking for another feature to hit. Those little check turns right there really kind of show you how steep it is. Even as slow as he just went, look at the size of that mu hair that he just boosted right there. This course, 55 degree angle, give you an idea of how fast and how much speed they're carrying into those big kickers. Well, you can just tell each one of these turns before they square up with a jump, they're really putting the brakes on. And even when they do so, they're going a lot further than they thought. So here comes Eric into the flats right here, the only groomed portion of the course, and it's just a setup for these big booters into the powder. What's Eric got coming in off of his toes? Backside 720 mm. coming up a little bit short, but Eric powering through that, not going down. A little butter around right there, coming into the light post section, the final big feature in front of the judges. What are we gonna see from Eric Jackson? What's he got? Carving down. Setting his line up right here. Wants that bonk. Little Gets tail it. tap right there. Very nicely done. Eric Jackson finishing off his run down there with that bonk. But check this out. The butter. Backside 720 off. Very nice. And then that mute air. I thought he was going really slow, but it's actually a huge air. And then the backside 720, a little bit short in the rotation, but sticks it. His day is done. He's down with Kier. Eric. You're like, give me the points, give me the points. Give me the points, please. Looked like you had a, a beautiful butter spinning off of the dock up there. Dude, I figured nobody else was really doing like butter tricks off stuff like that, so I tried to be a little different, and uh, I did a little back one to cab five. Made it down, and I was, uh, I was actually pretty stoked on that run. He's stoked on the run, and so were the judges. He does improve his score up to a 65.80. But again, it is Travis Rice leading the way in this two-run format. His 91 looks to be holding up so far. We are down to our final five. What do they have left? We'll find out after this. Welcome back to beautiful British Columbia for an event like no other. This is Red Bull Supernatural. 18 of the world's best free riders have come to Canada to compete on a course with over 100 different features. Right now, it is Travis Rice leading the way in this two-run format with a 91. And Devin Walsh moments ago had his second run. Big improvement on his first one, Todd, as he logs a 68.80. Legendary stylish snowboarder coming out of Canada. Devin Walsh, well, his style speaks for itself. Nice, calm, cool, and collected in the air, making the difficult look easy. 360 bonk to end his runoff. Great run for Devin Walsh. The mark to beat remains a 91 thrown down by Travis Rice. This is 24-year-old Kazuhiro Kokubo out of Japan. Kazu showed up at the U.S. Open a few years back at just 14 years of age. Since then, he's grown on to become a force in half-pipe snowboarding. Will he be able to take those skills, translate them to this powder? Well, his first run says yes. We'll see if he can improve. Here we go, Kazu dropping in. And one thing to be noted, Kazu's English has gotten a lot better over the years. And it's just due to the fact that he's been exposed to all these riders traveling the world, seeing great places and riding amazing events like this one. Kazu, huge air right there, coming through, threading the needle. Look at all the speed he's carrying, trying to shed a little bit of it off, trying to square himself up with another feature. 
Kazu, a compact rider, very short in stature, but very, very strong, able to stomp tricks that normal people shouldn't be able to. Here he comes, looking for something here, looking for a little love on the course. Must be eyeballing something, slowing down. And remember, this course, Todd, is 55 degrees wow. as Kazu airs that one out. That's a natural feature. And just by the way this is filmed, a lot of those features don't look as big as they are, but I can tell you right now that some of those things are just blind rollers, and these guys are just coming in hot to him. Here we go, Kazu into the sunlight. Coming in, what's he got? Switch, backside, 900, and whips that one around. Kazu making short work of the jump, coming into the final feature. Looking good. This half-pipe specialist is making this free ride transition look nice and easy. Here he comes into the light post feature. What's he got? Big, big ollie out into the flats there, up and over the entire thing. So Kazu up top here. Big air, nice little crail grab right there. Taking that wheelie and down, starting to throw the brakes on. And there's that method air into that little gully. And the switch backside 900. Let's go down to the finish with Keir Dillon. All right, Kazu, at the top, yeah. huge, huge jump. Were you expecting to go that big? Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Hey, brother. I'm gonna have to get more big, weaker. And Kazu Hero wheelies himself into the top five with a 75.50. We are down to our final three competitors. Travis Rice leads the way with a 91. Gigi in second, Nicholas in third. An event like no other in the back country of British Columbia. This is Red Bull Supernatural. We are down to our final three competitors, all trying to knock off Travis Rice in his 91. Jake Blavelt had his second opportunity moments ago, and he threw down a nice score and improvement, a 73.10. Blavelt with an assortment of tricks from top to bottom right there. You're looking at a backside 360. He would navigate this course strong. Ending things off with a big 540 and an attempted 360 bonk down at the bottom. Great score for Jake Blavo. And then there were two, our final two competitors to take their run here at Red Bull Supernatural. And this guy has so much style. Nicholas Mueller, the 29-year-old out of Switzerland. His first run, he got busy early on, having a lot of tricks mashed into the top section of this course. Nico Mueller. Trying to take that style he portrays in his video parts and put it in competitive form right here. Matati knows he can do no worse than third place right now. Mueller had an 80 to open things up. Can he top it? Well, it's going to take a lot to take down Rice. Travis had the perfect oh. package. Mueller with a massive air. Doubling two mushrooms right there. That was absolutely huge. Right here, backside 360. Another huge air. Nico Mueller. Taking some distance here at all these airs. There's a little frontside air off that little bump. Mueller going fast, trying to stay stylish, make every turn count. No mistakes for him. He went huge up top. That backside 360 that he did was absolutely massive. There's another side court, backside 540, landing in powder. So now he's going fakie. Will he keep this line going? Where's he going? And our five judges are going to stay busy with Nicholas Mueller. This looks like the outtakes from the art of flight. It really does. He's coming in switch to the bottom jump here. What will it be? Keeping his line consistent. Switch backside 360. Bringing that around now to forwards, coming into the bottom feature, the ender for Nicholas Mueller's run. He's got a bunch of great moves in here. A little butter 360. What's he got? Coming in switch again. Then back to forward. Which way is Nico going? He doesn't know. Coming off this right here, a little bonk to end Nicholas Mueller's runoff. Well, the mark he wants to beat with a little style at the end is a 91 thrown down by Travis Rice. Did he do enough? Watch how big this is right there. And then what I thought was the best trick of his entire run. Watch this cross court 360, a little check turn right there. It gets covered up. Wow, big 360. Let's throw it down to Keir Dillon, who's with Nico. Well, in my mind, probably one of the better runs I've seen today. I mean, seriously, you're, you're known as somebody that can float on top of the snow, make up lines as you go down. I mean, just talk about improvising through this course and how difficult it was to actually lay down a solid run. Yeah. Um, well, you know, when, when you're out there filming or 
or even a big air competition, you know, you're like, okay, you know what there is, and this one, one trick can you focus on, maybe two. But this, <laughs> there's so much, so you, you just kind of like, gotta go for it. So Nicholas Mueller sitting in third place as we get set for our final competitor. And it all comes down to this. 28-year-old John Jackson has an opportunity to knock off Travis Rice. It'll be a lofty score if he can get it. Remember, Travis is sitting on a 91. Yeah, that is a big goal right now. But John Jackson, just judging by the video parts that he has and his freestyle background, if anyone can do it, it's definitely him. But he's going to have to take some big risks to get the big rewards from the judges. He was the third competitor on the day to drop in on this course. Remember, we are dealing with 36,000 acres. This course, more than a mile long. And now everyone wants to know, can John Jay do it? Or will Travis Rice walk away as your champion? As you saw right there, that is the peanut gallery. The judges gathered to watch these guys come down the course and evaluate their every move here he comes john jackson huge air going sideways on the course right there he's gonna have to start stacking in the features kind of oh john going down that is not going to be good for his score in an effort to take down travis rice remember though he's got a lot of time this course takes almost two minutes for these guys to cover todd almost a mile long so he can recover but he's gonna have to do something huge at the bottom he's looking for something method air right there over that little cliff feature looking for every nook and cranny he can possibly find to get some points to perhaps try to take down travis rice although with that fall up top it is not looking good at this point all right he's going for the traverse right now our Final competitor, John Jackson. He needs better than a 91 to get the win. Little Ollie right there, John Jay, trying to find something here. What will give him a good amount of air time, something that he can possibly get up in the air and get tricky with, start to throw something down. Well, here he comes out into the flats now, about to come to the big kicker section. What's he got? He's gonna have to throw something big down if he wants to get some points. Up top, not so spectacular. John Jackson coming in hot. Double cork, backside 1080 and he for John Jackson. It. Wow, very, very smooth. Probably one of the smoothest airs we've seen landed all day long. John Jackson, technical tricks done into backcountry powder. Definitely the best air that we've seen done off the booters today. Here he comes, he's not done yet. Still some points to be made. John with a big ollie up and over. A great finish for John Jackson's run. Wow, the double cork, backside 10, off that booter down the bottom was huge. Speaking of huge, right there, John Jackson almost clipping his face. Will that backside double cork 1080 be enough to get him on the podium? We shall see. At what point in your run did you know that you wanted to throw the backside double cork? Kind of just coming into it, my mouth guard's rattling out, I'm like, <laughs> I'm going for it. And then she worked out, kind of. What's this event mean to you? Um, man, it's just like a huge step towards uh, snowboarding's future. It's, it's awesome. And, you know, got to give Trav props. He's such a doer, you know, thinks something like this up and puts it into action. So I'm stoked, man. It's rad. So John Jackson lays down his best run. Will it be enough to take out Travis Rice? He is our leader with a 91 as the judges furiously tabulate their final scores here at Red Bull Supernatural. We'll have your champion when we return to Canada. Red Bull Supernatural has been brought to you by Nike Snowboarding and in part by Casio G's One Commando. Tougher is smarter. By The Art of Flight, own the award-winning Travis Rice movie. Check it out at artofflightmovie.com. And by Ally Ride Shop. Shop for all your favorite brands. At the conclusion of an epic day here in the Kootenai Mountains, interior British Columbia, the Red Bull Supernatural comes to a conclusion would walk away with a title. One thing for certain, Todd Richards, everyone put on a great show. It was unbelievable, a definite changing of what contests in snowboarding will become in the future. This was just the first, hopefully, of many of these to come. But there has to be one winner, and in the end, it would be Travis Rice, as his 91 holds up, besting Gigi Ruff and Nico Mueller. And the best trick? 
John Jackson. Yeah, buddy, thank you. And for the trio on top, well-deserved accolades. I'm just grateful, man. I'm humbled. This is amazing. I'm speechless. Look who I'm standing between. Beautiful. And one final award to hand out, that is the Red Bull Signature Series moment. That would go to John Jackson with his perfect backside 1080 double corn. John Jackson making the difficult look easy into powder. So that brings this epic event to a close. Red Bull Supernatural lived up to all its billing. For Todd Richards and Keir Dillon, I'm Todd Harris saying so long for now as we send it back to Sal Masakela. I say it all the time, snowboarding is a beautiful thing. Congratulations to Travis for not only inventing this event, but winning it, and also Kiki Ruff and Nicholas Mueller, top-notch riding, and the entire field, really. Remember, Supernatural, it's only one of the events in the Red Bull Signature Series. Up next in the series, we will move on from the mind of Travis Rice and into the mind of pro free skier Simon Dumont. It's the Dumont Cup, where the best in free ski slope style will battle it out in Sunday River, Maine. Dumont Cup airing April 10th on the NBC Sports Network. And after that, make sure you mark your calendars for this one. We're going to be traveling to the final stop of four in the 2012 Crash Dice World Championships, the mecca of ice cross downhill, Quebec, Canada. Join me and about 100,000 crazy Canadians as we crown our world champion. That is April 21st on NBC. Thanks for joining us here at Supernatural. On behalf of the entire NBC Sports crew, I'm Sal Masakela, and I will see you next time.